Hey everyone, welcome to the Wild and Uncut podcast brought to you by Ruger. I'm your host, Christy Titus. Thank you for tuning in. The line is going hot, so let's go full send on this episode. Pioneering the spirit of the Wild West with 70 years of legendary innovation by your side. Built on the legacy of the Ruger Single Six, the new Wrangler is aimed for the drifter in all of us. Saddle up and ride, this one is wanted. The perfect revolver, whether it's your first or your next. Hey everybody, thank you for joining me for this episode of the Wild and Uncut podcast. We're here at the NSSF SHOT Show at the Night Force Optic booth with Sean Murphy. And today we're talking about your new, uh, I guess, consumer launch of the Dark Earth Color in your rifle scopes. It's new for 2023. Yeah, so the uh, this has been a popular request for us in our customer base. Uh, the Dark Earth came out of a military programs yeah. uh, requirement for some new sniper and carbine optics. And uh, people saw it, and they had to have it. So, yeah. so this this started out with a military-only offering. So, like when you would walk through the Night Force factory and you saw the Dark Earth color, you knew it was going to some sort of special team or somewhere overseas. And even this year, it's kind of interesting since you guys have kind of started showing this as of 2022 publicly. You're now seeing firearms manufacturers really start picking up this dark earth colorway in barrels like you know for example Ruger's even now doing some of these mm -hmm. colors so it's actually really fun to take this optic now and pair it with what some of the rifle manufacturers are doing kind of a me too movement if you will mm -hmm. on the on the colorway and it just looks good mm -hmm. your guys this whole tagline is dark earth is the new black yeah yeah I mean for so long rifle scopes have been black it kind yeah. of goes with anything it's kind of like jeans on a rifle kind of works with anything but yeah with the dark earth we've definitely seen uh you know in the on the ar world for sure you've yeah. seen the the multicolors you yeah. know whether it's brown green you know red or you know some crazy color patterns but uh no the dark earth's been something that we've actually had a. Uh, we did have a lot of consumer interest and then we're seeing people are ordering them because they're putting them on you know everything from the carbines to hunting guns you know mm -hmm. people doing kind of the the neat cerakote jobs that kind of blends in together so so not only are select uh I guess skews of the rifle scopes are available in dark earth, but you're also doing accessories too. So like for example, you have the black traditional night force rings with the optic here. However, you do have some um, rings and bases that are also available in dark earth. Correct, correct, yeah. Um kind of like matching your belt and your shoes together yeah. so sometimes people want to have you know we do make our own mounts like a cohesive so, look exactly so like in this case you know the scope and the mount are the same color mm -hmm. or you can mix and match it gives more options some people it's got to match some don't care or some like the two-tone effect but yeah we do have both options available not in every SKU that we yeah. offer but our most popular ones so on the optic side in dark earth do you have like a quick rundown of some of the families and, and what was available yep. so the so the dark earth star in our uh, military version of the ATAC R line. Okay. So, like in this case, this is actually one of our contract 1 to 8s. Uh, so, it does exist in the ATAC R, the 1 to 8 and the 7 to 35, which are our two big contract scopes. Like, here's the civilian 7 mm -hmm. to 35. And then we did extend it into the NX 8. So, all the 1 to 8, 2 and a half to 20, and 4 to 32 with a first focal plane mill radian configuration, so not every configuration. Yeah. Uh, but all three of those models uh, do have a dark earth option of some kind. That's outstanding. So you guys get online, go to nightforceoptics.com, learn more, or visit your favorite retailer and put in your request for the dark earth scopes. And a lot of, a lot of, I'm assuming, um, retail locations are already carrying this as a standard SKU. So be the first to have it on your rifle this year. Check out Night Force Optics. Thank you guys for joining us for this episode, and we'll see you soon. 
are coming at you all live from the Allen Company booth, which has recently acquired from founder Eric Navarro, Breakthrough Clean. Yes. And this is an awesome marriage of two incredible companies. Allen Company has been coming to SHOT Show since its inception. And I was talking to George mm -hmm. offline. We were trying to go back in time to think about how long ago that was. Um, it is such a long time ago. And Allen, you know, they are iconic in the shooting sports industry. Their support for the NSSF, their support for shooting sports, their support for conservation and all things firearms really cannot be understated. Their catalog is like almost 200 pages yeah, deep. It's, it's a heavy one. It's incredible. <laughs> They're the number one manufacturer in rifle cases, slings, mm -hmm. and, and accessories galore from targets and pistol pouches and cases. And now they've added breakthrough. This is your baby to this lineup yep. of an incredible group of, of product lines mm -hmm. in one great family. Yep. Well, Chris, as you know, uh, I started breaking about 10 years ago yeah. um, and, um, you know, grew the company. Uh, fortunately for us, um, Allen Company passed by our booth uh, last year at SHOT Show and say, hey, you, you want to sell? And I'm like, yeah. you know what, let's talk about it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, everything worked out, made the deal happen, and now uh, we're part of the mm -hmm. Allen Company and very happy to be here. Well, and I'm super excited because we <clears throat> met, I think, in 2017. Yeah, 2017. Yep. And I have been using Breakthrough Clean exclusively since 2017. And there are so many reasons why, and I'm really excited to kind of take the Breakthrough mm -hmm. message. You know, not only we're going to, you know, with Allen Company Marriage, mm -hmm. it's going to be more available in more places of distribution, but hopefully we have a much broader brush that we can paint the story of Breakthrough Clean that you're so proud of, mm -hmm. you know, this company that you've worked so hard to put together and you really have launched it into being that next level organization. Uh, thank you very much for that. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, I uh, uh, started the company, mm -hmm. uh, like I said, 10 years ago with the hope to offer um, the shooting industry a better solution to clean their firearms. Mm -hmm. uh, traditionally, um, the old chemistries that were smelly, toxic, carcinogenic have been around, and there really hasn't been any evolution to that. And um, I saw the opportunity, uh, and I took it. And thankfully, you know, with uh, God's good grace, we grew the company. We offer not only good chemicals, but mm -hmm. also quality cleaning uh, accessories uh, to um, to make it easier for you. Well, one yeah. thing that I love about it, coming from like the hunting background, is your products are odorless. And also, you know, being a lady, I don't like to walk into a room and I'm like, oh, heavy solvents, you can smell, you know, and they just reek. And, and this, you know, I can clean my firearm, keep mm. it field ready, clean it up after a rainstorm, whatever I need to do. And my firearm not only runs better, but I don't have to deal with all those heavy solvents and chemicals mm. and, and scents that really make it to where they're not user friendly. Correct. Correct. Um, so one of the things that people don't realize and not everybody has, you know, a place to go out and clean their firearm. You know, you have a lot of people living in apartments. Yeah, they do quarters. it in their living room um, on their kitchen table. Yep, yeah. absolutely. And you're not going to have a problem, you know, doing that mm -hmm. uh, as, as odd as that may sound, um, because uh, like you said, everything's odorless. You're mm -hmm. not going to get those noxious fumes. Uh, our products have very low VOC content. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, importantly, um, the fact that they they work, you yeah. know, which is the most important thing, you 100%. know. So you can say everything is odorless and this and that, mm -hmm. but if it doesn't work, it's you know quite useless. Mm -hmm. um, and another aspect to our our gun cleaning brand is as hunters, you know, you go out, you take all the the time to descent yourself and yeah. make sure that the animal. And imagine your rifle smells like you know it's like um, something that's not natural. Yeah. So uh, our odorless products, you know, kind of take care of that as well. And the other thing that I really love about the product lines is the freezing point is so low. Like I can have one of your, you know, small kits right. in my backpack or nearby in camp. And if it is cold, you know, like I like to keep my firearm dry. Obviously nobody wants their firearms wet. So these battle ropes are great. Mm -hmm. If I want to put any type of carbon remover on them, I can run that through. It's not going to smell. The oil has a very low freezing point. Like mm -hmm. this stuff is not going to fail you when you're in any climate or any situation, which that I really appreciate. That's right. So uh, typically the what causes uh, lubricants to gum up is because they use waxy paraffins in their chemistry. So our lubricants don't have any of that. We use a little bit better technology to add the rust and corrosion inhibitors in there, which allows our lubricants to get down to 
even a minus 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. And that also, since they're full synthetics, we're able to get up to very high operating temperatures as well above, well above 500 degrees. Mm -hmm. Which is really great, like if you're like me and you store some of your stuff in a container, like a shipping container, <laughs> like don't come to my house and look in my shipping container, but I have stuff in there. Um, but it, it, I don't have to worry about the product degradating. I don't have to worry about it failing me. I don't have to worry about it if I have it in my truck fault in the back of my truck. It does not degrade in hot or cold, and so I can nope. really trust that it's tried and true in any environment, which coming yep. from the shooting or hunting standpoint, that's really a mission critical. Oh, 100%. Yeah, not only in the, like you said, hunting, but you have, you know, our products is used in the tactical yeah. environment, law enforcement, military. Uh, we offer a wide a wide range of products for all applications. Mm -hmm. And like you said, you know, they're not gonna fail you, which is yeah. the most important thing. So let's talk like quick overview. You have so many kits here. Let's talk first and foremost, like Battle Rope 2.0. Uh, give give everybody kind of the top features of the Battle Rope. Here's a giant version of it. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is it on steroids. <laughs> yeah, that, that's for all your, all, everybody that has a 40 millimeter launcher, yeah. that's what you're gonna need. This is when, you, when you're shooting a cannon at home, this right. is what you clean it with <laughs> yeah yeah so that oddly enough that was actually a, a law enforcement agency that needed something to clean their 40 millimeter launcher so we created that product for them okay so this is legitimate oh yeah it's a real product okay this is uh, a real yeah. product this is not a demo i'm thinking this is a <laughs> oh, demo no no yeah but look, this we is got full a, function it's for sale <laughs> okay well this is this is a real product it yeah. is for sale but it also makes a great demo yeah so absolutely. the battle rope 2.0 um, talk about what makes the 2.0 yeah. so great. So let me, let's grab that little product right over here, which is uh, to something a little, yeah, that one right this there. This one? Yep, okay. That'll be it right there. I think there's a 2.0 in here, is there? And yep. yes, there is. All right, so what makes a Battle Rope 2.0, part of it is the carrying case. So it comes with an ICVA case that's molly attachable and also has a carabiner inside we can attach it to any bag right there. Mm -hmm. These come with a caliber outside of the EVA case. Oh, so you can quickly <clears throat> identify on your case, this one's built for a 38 or 9 millimeter handgun. Yes. So you can grab and go, because if you, you have 10 of these or 5 of these or whatever, you can easily identify which case kit you need to grab. Absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to be fumbling in your bag looking for all of them. You can find them easily case. Okay. So a little bit upgrade where we did the on the 2.0. So instead of a gravity fed system which some of the other um, competitors are out there that mm -hmm. use, we use a nylon coated cable that if you let me have that barrel real quick. Mm -hmm. So typically gravity fed systems you have to let gravity do the work right they yeah. only work downward and you pull it through correct our system you could use it vertically right so you don't have to worry wait till gravity to do the work mm -hmm. the firearm could be pointed in whatever direction and you could push the cable through as opposed to letting it to fall so there's enough <clears throat> rigidity in the actual cord that it you don't have to gravity flow it you can actually push it correct yeah this is a nylon coated cable yeah. uh, versus a shoestring mm -hmm. that um, that allows you to do that uh, one cool feature that's patented as well is is that the weight doubles as a handle. So you kind of pop this open, creates a handle, and you're able to pull it through easily. And that's how that system works. I'm not gonna pull it through this barrel because it's a 30 caliber barrel and a nine millimeter rope's not gonna go through it. But that's in, in essence what the Battle Rope 2.0 is all about. Okay. And that's how that system works. And this is available mm -hmm. in all calibers for whatever you're Every shooting. Every single caliber Pistol, that you're rifle, shooting. shotgun. Yes, ma'am. Outstanding. So yep. look for the Battle Rope 2.0. Mm -hmm. um, and then you also have several kits, like for example, this one here, you got a handgun cleaning kit. Yep, those are our Vision Series cleaning kits. That's actually one of our best selling uh, line of kits. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can see them all behind me yeah. here. Um, and this particular one that you're holding cleans a nine millimeter, 40 and a 45. Yeah, it's got everything. You can go online, you guys, and the entire breakthrough cleanup breakthrough clean lineup <laughs> is listed out online they have precision rifle kits as well yes absolutely. Um, those are you know anything that you need to clean your rifles pistols shotguns from your battle ropes mm -hmm. to actually full full dextered cleaning kits yep. um, talk a little bit about other accessories you guys have well we have a full line of accessories um, you can't see it it's off camera but we offer all the brushes the jags the patch holders mm -hmm. we have armors wrenches bench blocks um, these really cool fiber reinforced polymer picks that 
that do not break. So everything we do is high quality and with durability in mind. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about how you've tested your gear over the years. I mean, you're not new to this. Like you said, you've been in the business for 10 years, but you've really revolutionized, revolutionized your product line. And I really believe it's because you've actually listened to your consumers, mm -hmm. your customers, the people that are actually in the field using your products. And you're a shooter yourself. Like we met, training and shooting together mm -hmm. and and you know I knew instantly that you know you were in this game in the industry to create a product that was that is better than what is currently available. Yes, absolutely. So I come from an aerospace background and that's really where I get my chemical background mm -hmm. from. Um, so um, one of my hobbies was shooting. Yeah. And what was a hobby turned into a profession. And while I'm in that profession, since my goal was to really create the best products that I think I can mm -hmm. come up with, and I think I've done an okay job. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it's, it's a passion and, mm -hmm. and um, you know, it's here, here to stay and, and help grow the business. So let's go through your chemical line. So you do have an extensive chemical background. Talk to everybody about the different lines that you have worked to, to kind of formulate and make specific to breakthrough. All right, so the company was started with a breakthrough military grade solvent. Mm -hmm. What it is, a distilled petroleum product. Um, we've been able to distill out all the nasty stuff. So mm -hmm. things like benzene and trichloroethylene, which are carcinogens mm -hmm. and fall under the Pro California Prop 65. Mm -hmm. So we've been able to remove that from the chemistry. Those are what's called aromatics. So we've been able to distill those um, aromatics from the chemistry, rendering a completely odorless product that not only is safe to use, but uh, is effective as well. And it's not environmental environmentally toxic. No, and that's one thing about it. Like, you know, if you spill a <clears throat> bottle of solvent, uh, the breakthrough solvent on the ground, you don't have to worry about those biochemicals or biohazards. And it's safe to have yeah. on your skin, too. It's not going to make you sick no, by touching it. Not. I always worry, you know, if you have all of these, you know, these chemicals that we're cleaning our firearms with that have these carcinogens mm -hmm. in them. You know, what are the long term effects of that? We all clean our firearms frequently. And we can, you know, have a lot of confidence in the breakthrough product lineup that we don't expose ourselves or our families to those harmful potentially harmful chemicals. Correct. The Breakthrough Military Solvent actually has a toxicity clearance from the U.S. Department of the Army, and it's used well in, in, the, in the armed forces. Mm -hmm. So yeah, absolutely safe product to use. Um, it's pH neutral also, so not only is it safe for you to use, but it's safe on your weapon as well. Mm -hmm. So you have, it's safe on your plastics, your polymers, your hydroprinting, and coating that a lot of the modern firearms uh, today have. Okay, and so you also have in your line a specific copper remover, yep. but then you also have a carbon remover. Yeah. And so talk a little bit about the two, you know, the variances and mm -hmm. applications on when you would want to strip copper. Mm -hmm. Like for me personally, I, I typically re remove copper if I have any impact shifts. Right. Um, and then otherwise I tend to be on the carbon removing side. So give everybody, right. you know, kind of your philosophy on when and how to use copper remover versus carbon remover, or do we use them both in conjunction? Okay, so the Military grade solvent, as I mentioned before, is a petrol based product. So that's really designed to dissolve oils and greases. But what if there's no oils and greases around, right? So you need a water based chemistry. So that's where our Carbon Pro and our Copper Remover come into play. The Carbon Pro is a mixture of uh, advanced detergents and surfactants that are designed to break the bond that the carbon has with the metal mm -hmm. once it's heated mm -hmm. and caked on. So and I usually use the Carbon Remover after I pull a muzzle brake off or something like that right. and like to wipe those threads because that carbon buildup can really make you know, pulling off your brake mm -hmm. really, really difficult. So after I shoot a lot of times, I'll pull right. off that brake clean those threads with carbon remover and then re-thread them on with a little bit of lubricant. Exactly, and that was kind of the purpose of that chemistry. Um, it's a phenomenal bore cleaner, has rust and corrosion preventatives built into it, and it really uh, does a great job of getting that caked on stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and our copper remover, goes in line with our Carb, uh, Carbon Pro. Mm -hmm. um, this product is a water-based chemistry as well. Mm -hmm. Most uh, copper removers typically are ammonia-based, yeah. kind of smell, not good for metal. Um, our product is not, right? So you use a derivative of, of uh, uh, ammonia mm -hmm. and typically copper has a positive charge. Uh, the product has a negative charge, so it ceases They to attract. It, it ceases to pair itself off and that aids in the removal of the copper. So it works in tandem with the Carbon uh, Pro mm -hmm. to uh, clean your barrel. Okay, and then, you know, to kind of wrap up the line, we have the Battleborn, we have the grease. Um, yeah, whatever is yeah the, we have the oil and we got the grease. They're both right over there. Yeah, I'm Roughly trying to find it in the little, oh, here we go. So here is the lubricant and protectant. Yep. So we also have grease right here. So maybe walk everybody through 
how they're going to use the application for lubricant and protectant versus right. grease. Okay, uh, you wouldn't be changing anything from your typical little Typical, uh, typical cleaning and, mm -hmm. and, and lubricating. Um, one interesting thing about our lubricants are they're crystal clear, right? So as yeah. you can see, they're not going to stain your clothes. Um, we use a full synthetic blend that has rust and corrosion inhibitors mm -hmm. and anti-wear additives. Um, this particular is our HP Pro as our high performance mm -hmm. uh, lubricant. It's uh, really designed for uh, you know, your air platform, something that's going to get a lot of wear and tear. Mm -hmm. It's not going to break down when you need it most. Yeah. Where other lubricants will thin out and kind of fade away, our job, our lubricants are going to stay there and, and make sure that your firearm is functioning properly. Mm -hmm. Without attracting a ton of sand or dirt and debris and right. you know, yeah, things yeah. like that, you know, a thin layer goes a long way and, and it lasts. Absolutely. They're meant to penetrate into the pores and surface disparities of the metal and create a nice coat that the carbon sticks to as well. So not only does it help your firearm uh, function properly, the cleaning process becomes a lot better better afterwards. So what you're saying is I should be putting this a little bit on my threads as well when I'm reattaching my muzzle brakes or suppressors. You could do that, yep. Okay, and it's heat tolerant enough to, to withstand that type of abuse. A absolutely, yeah. Or you could use our grease, which also has that okay. application as well. So either way, you could do this mm -hmm. making those. Oh, absolutely. You could put those on the, your, the lugs, on the firearm, on, you could put that on the bolt carrier group. Um, you could use it to as a uh, to touch your choke tubes, like you said, mm -hmm, the, uh, the threading. I mean, there's mm -hmm. a, a whole bunch of applications that you could use our products for. And like I said, they don't have any waxy paraffins. They're going to last. They're not going to gum up on you. And the temperature range is, is quite large. Quite yeah, large. it's extensive. And, mm -hmm. and the entire product line itself is huge. You've made everything in easy to purchase kits. It's all online. You guys can go to the Buy Allen website. So B Y A L L E N dot com and shop or you can go to breakthroughclean.com and Breakthrough check out the entire com. product yep. line as well and if you guys are on the allen website if you use code k titus 10 at checkout you'll save 10 percent um you guys also have a website their marketing seriously is legit <laughs> you guys nice. have done a great job with your marketing your taglines you guys make this fun you've got cleaning mats mm -hmm. tons of stuff people can order and and this is not like stuffy old people stuff you guys have really taken your marketing mm. and made it fun and young and and exciting well thank you very much for that i really appreciate it i mean there's a new generation of shooters yeah growing up and you know you gotta you gotta appeal to to your to your yeah. tar to your target audience and um i I think we've done an okay job of it. No, you so, guys have thanks. done a great job. And like I said, since I was introduced to your product when we were on the range together in mm -hmm. 2017, I've been a diehard user. I can't say enough great things about the product. I am so happy that we're now paired with Alan. And yep. um, you guys get online, check out Breakthrough Clean. If you have any questions, is there like anybody that can they can go Q&A on internally at your company? Oh, yeah. Or so if you have any uh, questions on the chemicals or anything that has to do with Breakthrough Clean, feel free to reach out to me. I'm uh, available uh, through the Alan uh, contacts. Mm -hmm. And um, anybody else at Alan for any of the other great products that mm -hmm. Alan manufactures. Yeah, so guys, check out your local retailer. Mm -hmm. Go online to buyallen.com or Breakthrough Clean com and check up the full lineup um, and thank you so much Eric for taking the time to sit down with us at SHOT Show here and uh, we appreciate all of you for tuning in and we will see you for the next go round. Awesome my pleasure thank you for having me Thanks. Christy appreciate it. Hey, I'm Christy Titus, and for the past several years, I've really come to rely on OnX Hunt for mapping both in and out of the field. But now I'm also using it to plan and research units for my application season. OnX has teamed up with TopRet to show you everything that you need for draw odds in most of the Western states. And access to TopRet services is completely free to all elite members. I now have both the power of Onyx Hunt and Top Rep to help me strategize my state hunting applications. If you haven't already, download Onyx Hunt and upgrade to the elite membership to access Top Rep as well as other great elite benefits. Hey everybody, thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Wild Nut Cut Podcast. We're still coming at you live from the NSSF SHOT Show, and we are at the Ruger booth with my good friend Marty Stonecipher from Armed Women of America with their tagline of Armed, Brave, Confident. 
I absolutely love you guys. Um, I've been working with you for years now, and what you're doing is such important community empowerment for women across the country. Thank you so much, Marty, for everything that you do. Oh, you're welcome. It's our pleasure. You know, it really is. That's what it's all about, right? Yeah. And we all need to just come together in community and help each other learn and grow as shooters. So mm -hmm. that's it's really an honor to be able to do that. So tell everybody about AWA. What is AWA? AWA. <laughs> Armed Women of America. So we are a national nonprofit organization mm -hmm. that has um, 262 chapters across the country in 47 states mm -hmm. that just um, working to help women become their own self-protectors and um, engage in that journey. So wherever they're at. So from beginners to experienced shooters all around, um, ages 14 and up, depending on, you know, what the, the laws in the state are, mm -hmm. you know, so we have some youth and all the way up into you know, 90 years old. Yeah. So it's pretty incredible. And you guys have qualified instructors. And what I love about your instructors is they're constantly continuing their own educational yes. journey. So it's not like they do one class and they're like, oh, no, we're good. I'm an instructor. I don't, I've don't. i got this. You guys host regional and national events yes. where instructors actually are going and meeting with other people um, and other instructors and really collaborating information mm -hmm. together. Absolutely. I mean, that's what it's all about. We have to learn and grow ourselves, right, so that we can help others on that journey. So it's a constant learning. We should always be constant learners. Mm -hmm. So and not get stuck in that rut mm -hmm. of, you know, I've got, I'm good enough because we can always learn something new and the industry is always changing mm -hmm. as well. So there's always new technology, new things, mm -hmm. um, new ways to train and train different people. Mm -hmm. So on the Arm Women chapters, you know, when, what you can find when you go to them is you're going to have rifle instructors pistol instruction and every chapter will kind of vary on what they offer as far as curriculum and training but regardless of what that is you're gonna find fellowship you're gonna find safe responsible gun ownership you're gonna find a team of women mm -hmm. that is well equipped to help you through either a personal protection carry mm -hmm. or a first-time hunting situation yes. and it and we have this awesome community where you know maybe there's not somebody that's an expert but you, you can have that to draw on that sisterhood that community mm -hmm. and pull in and have those questions answered for women yes absolutely so you know just have that if our, our leaders don't know something we have groups from mm -hmm. women all over the country mm -hmm. that will if somebody doesn't know something somebody else in the country does and we'll find that out and we're gonna help get that information to you and these women are testing gear they have been carrying on body, off body. They can help answer some of these really pressing questions that, you know, maybe first time firearms owners have. You know, like Jen from Girls with Guns was just here, and we were kind of joking about, you know, using the restroom with your firearm on your, mm -hmm. in an appendix carry because there is, there is, um, a method to safely doing that and and that's what these groups are about we you know we're here to help in, in empower each other to safely carry if mm -hmm. we make that choice but to also to be confident and and learn how shooting sports are so much fun yes absolutely so i like for instance my chapter meeting just because I run one as well so I'm not just a national program director also running a chapter we just went over you know all the different options to carry you know mm -hmm. all the different holster options and different things different body types mm -hmm. because it's so different and for everybody styles depending yes. on what you're wearing yeah mm -hmm. so there's just so many different options out there and we're working to cover all of that mm -hmm. so um, all the way from the shooting to the lifestyle itself mm -hmm. and that's one thing I love about working with Ruger is like last year for your regional events mm -hmm. you know Ruger donated um, the Ruger precision rim fires so ladies could come in at our regional mm -hmm. event we did a positional shooting class where um, we were teaching ladies, you know, hey, before you go on your next hunt or your first hunt, here's some, here's how you shoot prone, here's how you could shoot kneeling, here's how you could shoot standing, and we were able to do that with those precision rim fires, operating the bolt, manipulating that, um, target acquisition, getting on site. Um, that was so much fun. Night Force brought in one of their lead instructors as well, mm -hmm. and the ladies had an, an excellent experience, and I could mm -hmm. not believe how many smiles were, you know, coming from these ladies at the end of the day. Absolutely, because so many of the ladies don't have the opportunity to shoot a firearm like mm -hmm. that, you know, like the root precision. So to have that experience and that exposure, because now the growth continues, right? I'm That's comfortable. Right. I'm, I've learned something new. I've learned something different. And then they go home and they take that too, mm -hmm. that confidence with them to learn and share that education with somebody else. Yeah, and Jen O'Hare was there, and she was teaching, you know, some drawing from a holster techniques, mm -hmm. um, you know, making sure your clothing's pulled out and how to responsibly and slowly mm -hmm. reholster and, you know, make these considerations. So if you guys are wanting extra training, 
look on Armed Women of America's website check and see if there's a local chapter near you and if there's not reach out maybe you're just the person that can spearhead joining or not joining but creating a chapter yes, absolutely so there's all kinds of opportunities too and don't let it be a barrier that maybe you're not an instructor yet because we're going to help you with that we're yeah. going to help you guide you through that process mm -hmm. and what that looks like yeah, and, and so all of your ladies go through what type of um, instructor training for the most part? Um, so right now they're um, NRA or USCCA, mm -hmm. so depending on what they work, they can also work with Gunsight Academy through their um, instructor program that they have mm -hmm. there to um, instruct at our chapters. But we're also working on new creative things where we're going to have some instructor credentials internally mm -hmm. that will allow those that maybe don't want to teach outside of the chapters, but they can teach women in their communities through our organization. And really you're create, creating a strong community of fellowship, women that are like-minded, that want to enjoy shooting sports, mm -hmm. be safe and responsible, yeah. be more comfortable carrying, be their yes. first line of defense mm -hmm. if that is a choice they make. And But most importantly, have a great fellowship yes. and, and, and feel confident in their mm -hmm. and safe in their own homes yes. traveling to their vehicles um, just being a, you know confident living yeah absolutely and it, it goes all the way from being situationally aware mm -hmm. you know and, and working all the way through um, having your firearm you know if you need it or choose to use it so mm -hmm. yeah it's exciting so where can women find more information about AY your website is armedwomen.org okay and then you guys are also on Instagram we are and what's your handle? Do you know? Armed Women of America. Okay. So go to the Armed Women of America sites, find out more information. They are having a national convention in August. August 11th through the 13th in Branson, Missouri. So um, leaders and members will be able to attend that event and get additional training through courses with top of the line instructors. Mm -hmm. But we're also having an expo this year, which will be open to the public. So um, definitely look at that, armedwomen.org. You'll be able to find the information on that as well. Thank you, Marty, so much for everything that you guys are doing. And thank you all for tuning into this episode of Wild and Uncut Podcast. And we'll see you next time. Hey, everybody. We are still coming at you live from the NSSF Shop Show. We are at the Ruger booth, and I'm with Barbara Baird. And she's with Women's Outdoor News. And, Barbara, you are so connected with all of things shooting, hunting, firearms training, safety, but all oh, things you. women. And yes. that's what I love about the WAN or Women's Outdoor yes, Network, yes. you guys really provide a platform for women to kind of have a one-stop shop for resources mm -hmm. and support and tell everybody a little bit about what you do. Sure, sure. We are, I think, the premier publication these days online for women mm -hmm. who shoot, hunt, fish, love adventurous outdoor mm -hmm. lifestyles, try to want to do it safely mm -hmm. how, and, and learn new skills. Mm -hmm. So women and girls, actually. Yeah. We have a lot of girl readers and 50-50 men and women. Mm -hmm. Men that want, you know, the women in their lives to experience what you and I get to experience yeah. outdoors safely. Mm -hmm. So um, that is what we do. We're in our 16th year. I had yeah. to do the math in my head. Well, one of the fun things that, um, you know, kind of come out of SHOT Show every year is a new batch of statistics. Mm -hmm. And you were just looking over the statistics for women in hunting. I and know. it's really astounding, the it's numbers amazing. that are being released right now. It is. We know that the recent U.S. Fish and Wildlife Survey says that hunting overall is down a little mm -hmm. bit, you know, nationwide. But the women's market, the women, women's, uh, the women's group is up. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, I have heard anywhere from, well, it used to be like 11 percent about yeah. 10 years ago. And now I think it's up around, I want to say safely, 19 percent, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. which means industry is starting to really look at us now. Because Absolutely. we almost have a quarter of the market. Mm -hmm. um, and then I've even heard today from somebody... 44%. I think that's high. I've heard 27%. But I think the good thing is the trend is up. Yeah. And and I think a lot of that is the outreach that the hunting and shooting sports community yes. has put to welcoming women in. I think so. And it's no longer this good old boys club right. um, where the father and son go hunting and the girls stay home and sew with the mom. That you can so sew if you want to and stay home with your mom, but we also want you to go hunting. I know um, and do. I think there's this huge transition and change. Um, and you see manufacturers like Ruger really embrace that where they're not just building like a girl's firearm. Oh, so true. So um, true. Which I, 
I think that's great that firearms manufacturers or people are making firearms for girls. But I like that Ruger makes firearms for everyone, whether right. you're a boy or a girl. And they have so many models that have adjustable length of pull, mm -hmm. that have these features that make the firearm truly customizable to any stature of shooter. This is true. This is true. And also, I think that the industry is more inviting to women, just like, mm -hmm. hey, you know what? We've had this all the time, and why don't you come and try it? Mm -hmm. Instead of like, oh, we're going to make one special little gun for you. We're going to give you your little gun, and it's going to be pink. Uh, yes, or, or tiny. Yes. You know, or tiny handgun. Yeah. No, how about, hey, why don't you try, why don't you train with this one? Mm -hmm. 45. You might like it. Yeah. So uh, that that is, that's a big change mm -hmm. I've seen. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I want to say about hunting is, I don't want to bash men because I just did a series on Boone and Crockett girls mm -hmm. that hunt and the, they have already trophy book, mm -hmm. you know, entries because mm -hmm. their dads, every single one of them in the series, their dads are the ones that check the game cameras with them mm -hmm. and went out hunting with them. And like one was 11 years old and she yeah. has a trophy monster buck in Kansas. Mm -hmm. But her dad told me, hey, <laughs> I could have taken that shot, but I didn't want to. I want her to have that experience. Yeah. Now, just think. She's yeah. only 11. Yeah. Her, she set the bar high. Good luck, girl, right? Yeah, yeah. Another yeah. One. Your parents just gave you a lifetime experience as an 11-year-old. Because you're going to okay. be disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be. Don't, that. don't. Yeah, don't have too many expectations. But that's 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 no, great. They're still. fostering a, a, a place where their daughter can, you know, feel welcome and, and have that excitement and that, and that experience and, and gain that confidence to keep her hunting. Yes, and so it's men and women together. I yes. think just, like, it has to be more welcoming to women, from men, from women, mm -hmm. and... Um, there we go. And I think we're seeing it. You guys have an excellent staff of writers. Thank you. Um, we do. And so many women that are covering such a diverse range of topics from what's in your range bag mm -hmm. to selecting firearms and mm -hmm. basic hunting tips and Women's Outdoor News really is kind of that one-stop shop to get that women's empowerment of women that are out there shooting, that are testing products, and reporting back to women in real time yes. what they're finding. Because we always knew, back in 2008 when WordPress was introduced, that women would want to communicate. Mm -hmm. Duh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, we yeah, want we, a network. We talk. <laughs> we do. So we want, and we know too that women will look for seven sources before they buy a gun. Okay. So they're going to, it could be online, it could be talking to their friends, it could be reading a magazine, it could be seeing Shoot Like a Girl trailer. Yeah. You know, it could be something. But usually about seven on average will will influence a woman to whether or not she really wants to take that first step and actually acquire a, a gun. Uh -huh. So I think that's really interesting. We like to be there for them. And yeah. I feel that, you know, in the Google searches, we are. Yeah, right. you're one of those first steps to help them lead themselves into firearms ownership, whether it be for hunting or personal protection. Right. And then they can ask questions. Like, for, for example, you contribute to Women's Outdoor mm -hmm. News. Um, if women want to comment and ask you a question, if you don't see it, we'll say, hey, Christy, um, this can lady wants this to know question? this. And the other cool thing we're seeing is women are really concerned about ammunition. Yeah. Because, you know, it's not like a, a 243 and a 30 out 6 are very different. Yeah. And where, how you can use them. Mm-hmm. Um, and just, you know, women are really interested in what they put in their guns. Yeah. Yeah, what cartridge their mm -hmm. firearms are chambered in and we what's going to work best for them. And, you know, we see that with a with a pistol. There's a lot of um, women that or men that automatically assume that a woman should have a tiny micro pistol. And that's not always the best answer. I know, it's not. You know, some it's of not. the larger frame pistols are more comfortable to shoot. They're funner to shoot. We feel more safe shooting mm -hmm. them. Um, and, and really just, I think the great thing about what Juan does and the entire shooting community is say, hey, okay, firearms manufacturers manufacture a lot of different firearms yeah. because there isn't one that's necessarily the be all end all for every that's application right. or that's every right. person. Um, so that, you know, that's really important. One of the things like with Ruger is they have uh, light rack slides in mm -hmm. a lot of their firearms now. And it you know, takes people that have reduced hand strength and they can actually manipulate those slides and not feel like they're forcing it. Or, you know, you see somebody with some reduced strength and they're kind of shaking, trying to operate the gun. Mm -hmm. That person's not going to have no, confidence no. picking up and carrying that firearm day to day. So we're seeing a, a big transition in you know some of these springs that are easier to operate, easier to manipulate, make us more comfortable in shooting them. And the other thing is, you know, we're taking some firearms, we're chambering them in 22, like mm -hmm. the LCP2. Mm -hmm. We've got it in a 380, but we also have it in a 22 long rifle. So women can go and they can plink with that 22, and then they can turn around and carry sure. with that 380. That's right, and, th and they're familiar with the, the features of the gun. That's and right. they feel a lot more comfortable if they have the confidence, like yeah. you say. That is, that is good. Yeah. And, I, and it all goes down to training. It yes, all goes down to creating a network. 
Now, you mentioned Shoot Like a Girl. There's so many other women's networks out there. List out just a couple of resources that ladies, if they want to get into shooting, beyond Shoot Like a Girl, get online, look at, they have they have over 30 states they're doing in it, or 30 events that they're doing this mm -hmm. year. Um, if you want to go in and participate in shooting sports, pick up a firearm and actually shoot it without firing a projectile. They have that capability. Yes. But then there's other groups like um, a Girl and a Gun or mm -hmm. Armed Women of America that have shooting chapters around the country. There are, and you can go to our website, womensoutdoornews.com, and at the top we have it. We offer a, a PDF, and it's free, okay. of women's and girls' organizations around the country, shooting, fishing, adventure, maybe just hiking is your thing, yeah. but hey, I want to be safe. Whether well, that means I carry a gun or pepper spray, or mm -hmm. I increase my situational awareness, mm -hmm. how to run with a gun yeah. or pepper spray. Wait, that's a very, very popular uh, concept. But anyway, you can download that and then it also has the links. But we're always talking about check with your local state, like mm -hmm. in Wyoming, you've got a great, uh, probably a great women's program at yeah. through your um, Department of Wild Fish and Game. Yeah type thing though they were are always offering yeah. things but there there are so many women's groups whether local or national you got sisterhood of the outdoors with amy ray i was yeah, just she's with her fantastic becoming yeah. an outdoors woman yes. out of wisconsin which is yeah. all over the country yeah. and they even do international trips yeah. now mm -hmm. so um even there's a lot of opportunities out there and then of course always just find somebody yeah and ask somebody if you admire somebody who is outdoors, who you want to mentor you, mm -hmm. you know, chances are that person, male or female, will yeah. say yes. There's also the First Hunt Foundation, and Rick Brazell is the founder of that, and he's a very good friend of mine, and they have um, trained instructors in 40 different locations oh, around wow. the country, and they're, they go through a very, very aggressive training program. They're actually training mentors as okay. well, which is really hard. If you're somebody out there that's looking to become a mentor and you yeah. want additional training, you know, look up First Hunt Foundation. Mm -hmm. You know, Women's Outdoor News, all of these people, we all want to be a great resource to help bolster mm -hmm. shooting sports participation. Hunting is on the decline. Um, the amount of hunters that are participating in hunting is declining, and and it's and I would say even families that hunt, less than 50% of those kids that grow up in hunting households participate in hunting. So it's really important that those hunting households also encourage and mentor kids that maybe don't come from a hunting mm -hmm. household I agree. to invite them into going in the field. Um, you know, a lot of single parent households out there mm -hmm. where kids you know want to hand up into doing something new. It's going to broaden their horizons teach them how hunting is conservation and bring them into a place where they can enjoy the great outdoors safely and responsibly while providing for their family in the future. That's so true. And you know there's that one statistic that is on our side. Women who hunt with their children, their mm -hmm. children are more likely from the National Shooting Sports Foundation to hunt when they're adults than if they hunt with their dads. Oh. What? You know why, don't you? Mm. We bring better snacks. Ah, that's true. Moms bring better snacks, and they always make sure that we're warm and our hands aren't cold. That's right. Yeah, that's right. That's one thing. You know, I grew up in a household. My dad hunted. I hunted with my dad. My mom didn't hunt. Mm -hmm. And I, I really think it's okay for women out there. If you have kids, it's okay that you don't actively hunt. My right. mom never did. What my mom did was she would cook cookies for us. Sure. She would cook hot meals for us. Mm -hmm. And when we came back after a trip and we were cold and tired, she had a hot meal for us. Mm -hmm. Like, we felt the blanket of warmth from my mom and her love and support on the mountain and when we got home. Cool. And hunting doesn't have to necessarily be for you, but you can end up being mm -hmm. a very pivotal role in your family and encouraging yes. your kids to participate, even if it's something you've decided not to do. Mm -hmm. um, and that, okay. I don't think that can be and stressed okay. enough, too, because hunting is not for everyone. It's not. I mean, you might not be wired to hunt. Yeah. I really think people are wired mm -hmm. one way, a hunter, yeah. gatherer, or a little mix of each. Mm -hmm. so. And not everybody is, you know, interested in being um, someone that concealed carries. So you have great programs right. out there like the NRA Refuse to Be a Victim, mm -hmm. which is a non-carry training where you can, mm -hmm. you know, better prepare your home, better prepare your mm -hmm. situational awareness. We, yeah. You know, use that as a broad reaching term, but it is true. Yes. Being aware, trusting ourselves, um, and focusing with intensity on, okay, active checkpoints when we walk into a room active things to notice and keep it simple and help keep us safe and, and all of these programs are designed to help our safe shooting community as well. Amen. Yeah. So if anybody wants to find out more about what Women's Outdoor News is doing, they just go onto the website? Yes. Women'sOutdoorNews.com. We're there. And then all of our social media and okay. Pinterest. And Pinterest. So social media, Pinterest, their website, Women'sOutdoorNews.com. Barbara and her team of ladies, are, they're just doing an excellent job providing a huge resource to their communities. And we thank you so much for everything you're doing. I know Ruger is a huge supporter of yes. everything that you ladies are doing and really trying to take that and encourage women to get to the range, get in the field, 
invite a kid, invite another woman, and really grow our um, shooting sports family. So thank you for everything you do. Thank you for taking the time to join us today on this podcast. My pleasure. Thank you, Christy. A buck's antler growth potential is tied directly to his nutritional intake. The quicker they recover from the stress of the rut and the harsh elements found in winter months, the sooner they can begin new antler development. Supplemental nutrition, like the Rack One system, promotes healthy deer herds and jumpstarts new antler growth. Rack One's grow phase is specifically designed to provide everything that deer need to recover and reach their genetic potential. Accelerator is the apex when it comes to optimizing whitetail mineral intake. And big game butters fuel deer with 22% protein and 44% fat to boost antler growth and supercharge recovery. To learn more about the grow, scout, or hunt systems from Rack One, visit the website at huntrack1.com. Hey everybody, thank you for tuning into this episode of the Wild and Uncut podcast. I am here with Miss Amy Ray from Sisterhood of the Outdoors. And Amy, you are doing so much to empower women in shooting sports and hunting. Tell everybody a little bit about the Sisterhood. So the Sisterhood of the Outdoors is an organization that creates events for women. Mm -hmm. So we want to create opportunity. One of the most important things we do is create access. Mm -hmm. And our formula for success has been that we have um, our hosted staff on each event. So you're going to have a mentor there. So if you've never hunted, I get that question a lot. Can I go hunting with you even though yeah. I've never hunted? Yes, you can book a hunt with the Sister of the Outdoors because we're going to make you prepared. We're going to be there for you with the firearms and the safety because our team is very talented. Yes. Um, I'm really, very proud of my staff and what they're able to achieve. Yeah, you have an incredible team. We hunt all year, all, mm -hmm. all season, all animals, all species. Mm -hmm. So, if, And we have a lot of first. So if you whitetail hunt at home, yeah. but you've never turkey hunted, now you're going to turkey hunt with yeah. us. Or we may get you your first duck or your first elk. So we're there for a lot of first shots, mm -hmm. and that's one of my favorite things to empower women is to be there for them and experience their journey into the outdoors. Yeah, and it doesn't matter how old you are. Uh, the sisterhood is there to help you to make that first step or second step in hunting and encourage you and really create a thriving community of women that have shared interest and passion right. and a place to really connect into, you know, like you said, the sisterhood. Right, so the new message um, for us is like, let us help you become the sportswoman you want to be. Mm -hmm. So that captures you at any point in that journey, whether it's your first shots at the range or it's your first hunt. Um, and we can help you, like all the questions that you have, all the gear that you need, we can gear you up with our partner's gears. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so we've been there and had the experience and we only work with licensed guides and outfitters. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important to say, cause they're our partner, right? Yeah. So they know we're coming with a group of inexperienced women and there may be new hunters there. So we need a little patience. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of questions mm -hmm. and they, they kind of really enjoy the atmosphere when we bring the women because we're coachable. Yeah. And we soak up a lot of information and they enjoy it um, just as much as we do. So our Outfitter Partner Program has been very important to the success of our business. Um, but you know, we never can guarantee that you'll harvest an animal, but we can guarantee that you'll have a really good time and your life might be changed from being on a sisterhood event. So how does everybody connect in with the sisterhood? Did you just go to your website? Website is the place where we do all of our bookings. Um, we do an inventory there so we don't overbook. Mm -hmm. uh, once you're booked, we will contact you through either myself or one of the hosts mm -hmm. to um, add you to a private event page where we will let you ask any question you can imagine. And we keep those private for a reason so yeah. that people don't necessarily see our travel arrangements or you know, be able to follow everything we're doing mm -hmm. um, and keep it safe. And that's where we do the gear list, and that's where the partnerships with um, people that were like Ruger and Beretta and some other firearms partners that we've worked with in the past, um, that's where we can share that information with the women. So the connection there to the gear in the industry has been key to the support because women deserve to have the best gear. Yeah. And speaking of that, 
you are now working with Cryptech Camouflage, which obviously I've been with Cryptech for, I right. think, six years. They're lifelong friends of mine. Well, not lifelong. I feel like it's been a life. Fam but like family. They are like family. They are longtime friends of mine, um, Butch and Josh over there and the whole team at Cryptech. And you're bringing back the women's line this year I in am. 2023, which I am forever grateful and so thankful. Thank you, Chrissy. So talk a little bit about what you're bringing back for the ladies this year. So it's important for me that um, the women have a lot of choices now from 10 years ago. So bravo to the industry for where we've come with women's clothing. But for me, I like something that I call technical perfection. Yeah. And that's what I found in the Dial Bar line with Cryptech. Mm -hmm. And then when I saw their um, new Skyfall pattern for oh, white tail. Oh, it's fantastic. The Skyfall pattern is. It's, it was my favorite. It's and a very attractive hanging pattern, like when you look well, at it on the rack. But also it's a very effective pattern in the Very woods. effective. And the shadow pattern on that pattern makes it, you just disappear into mm -hmm. the woods. It's amazing, the technology. But like Chrissy said, I feel like there's some street cred to some oh, of the shirts. Oh, 100%. Shirts. I, and I, I like, wear them around town, and everyone's yeah. like, where did you get that That is shirt? a great pattern. And I'm like, it's a great pattern. Yeah. It works for everything. Mm -hmm. So um, the Dalibor. You guys are bringing back the Dalibor pants and jacket. Pan, Dalibor jacket. And we're going to have two um, weighted quarter zips. One will be lightweight for early season mm -hmm. bow or early season whitetail because we're, we're really wanting to focus on the whitetail market mm -hmm. in the Midwest and the mm -hmm. Southeast with this pattern. Um, I've elk hunted in the Dalibor as my base mid layer because yeah. I always take my snow clothes, mm -hmm. you know, to the mountains and I had my cryptic bibs to put on top. Mm -hmm. But turns this this year my elk hunt was hot, so we wore them all day every day and I had three women trying, mm -hmm. and the feedback I got was phenomenal. Yeah. So we're real excited, and I think when we launch, you'll be able to purchase what I consider, you know, it's an investment piece, right? Because mm -hmm. But you want to have something that lasts a long time. Mm -hmm. And the features on these clothes are the, like, the technical, I just like, keep saying technical perfection, but it's sim simple too. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to have the, the knee pads, so they'll be sewn for the knee pad inside the pan. Mm -hmm. um, the pockets, and we still have the vents on the side. Yeah. Uh, the inseam is um, between 32, 31. And I have hunted everything in North America in the Delaware pant that you guys have watched on my show since 2018. Um, sometimes I, you know, hunt in, a, in the, the Valhalla style also, but the Dalibor has been a tried and true for sheep hunting to elk hunting. You can put layers under it. You can layer over it. Honestly, I really don't layer over the Dalibor pant unless I'm sitting in the whitetail stand and then I'm rolling with That's the Velas. That's I did. Um, but for most of my big game hunting, the Dalibor pant is a fantastic pant. It has some reinforcements on the knees that um, help keep, you know, them from keep them protected when you're in rocks and shale and right. um, they're just a great pant um, and and the jacket is also it's a really nice shell so it's a shell it's got um, some water resistance um, mm -hmm. on the fabric so if it rains it's gonna bead off it's bead like a DWR off. durable water repellent but it's not yeah. technically it's not waterproof because the, the right. seams aren't taped and the zippers aren't taped but it does you're not have, gonna get wet no but it does have some waterproof component to it which keeps you comfortable if conditions change quickly. Right. And I like the hood. That we have the bungee mm -hmm. cord in the hood. So if you need to zip down for yeah. wind, you can do that. We have the chest pockets. Mm -hmm. uh, iPhones and Google mm -hmm. phones fit in the chest pockets. Mm -hmm. So do hot hands and licenses and pocket knives. So we have... Like, I have a backpack for that. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm like loading down my jacket. <laughs> <laughs> but there, the point is, is the jacket has a lot of room for storage for whatever you need to bring right. in the field. And I really like that it's um, a lightweight fabric that's quiet. Mm -hmm. So for a whitetail, which is our target, mm -hmm. um, when you're moving around the stand, you're not getting that rustly yeah. uh, move or noises mm -hmm. off of your jacket. Mm -hmm. so it is really quiet. quiet. Mm -hmm. And very washable too. Yeah. I've had to wash mine a couple times and just wash it, hang it up to dry, air dry, and you're good to go. So when are ladies, when are we going to be able to pick up the Cryptech Women's line again? This is a 2023 project. Fantastic. Um, we're shooting for May. Mm -hmm. um, but you know how supply chains are right now. So yeah. we've um, re built a new robust e-commerce website. Mm -hmm. It's a sell direct program. Mm -hmm. Sister to the Outdoors will be launching it. And we're hopefully we'll have everybody outfitted by this fall. That's the goal. 
Yeah, well, I'll be in it this fall. I can promise you that because I'm already in it and you can't take it off of me. So right. <laughs> I'm not giving it up. But no, you guys, we are so excited to have the Cryptech family expand into the sisterhood of the outdoors and what you're doing to really not only welcome women into the shooting community, hunting community, but also equip them well. Right. We want to be there for them. Yeah. And we want you to feel like you belong in the outdoors. Yeah. And I think um, I've read an article this year called See Hunting Differently. Mm -hmm. And my message to everyone is that no matter what organization you're with or where you're hunting, like everybody belongs in the outdoors and deer camp's the same, but the people are changing. And, mm -hmm. it, and it's really great that we have companies with gear like Cryptic to support the women and yeah. have product that works for those people entering. So the whole set, when um, it goes on sale online, you can get the two shirts, the pants and the jacket for under $650. Yeah, which is an incredible deal. And, and I don't want to discourage ladies that uh, participate in shooting sports from using this. So when I'm running matches Absolutely. and I'm shooting competition like these these are the clothes that I'm already wearing in matches and competition they move with you they're um, breathable and and they're great so I mean whether you're a hunter or not if you participate in shooting sports or you just want a good-looking jacket like that Delavore jacket is so I buy great. it a little bit small so it's kind of like a fitted coat and um, I'll wear that one to town or I'll or I'll order up a size and I can layer underneath it as well right. so you know keep that in mind when you guys are ordering um, whether you want it to be more fitted or or if you want a layer up underneath it and um, you know get online sister to the outdoors check it out it, the line will also be available on the cryptech website as, as well correct I'm not sure about that. Okay. We'll have to ask well, we Butch and Cryptic. So um, we will we will keep you guys up to date on where to go exactly to get the Cryptic women's line. But right now, Sisterhood of the Outdoors. And get on there also and check out some of their women's programs. We want to encourage everybody to get involved in hunting and shooting sports. And welcome you to our Sisterhood community. Thank you, Christy. It's so exciting. Yeah, and no, thank you so you much. Glad you could share for, with us today. And yeah, thank you for We love everything down. you've done for us to pave the way for women in the outdoors. It's I awesome. Don't, I don't want to you be the have, paver of the way. Or, you are. I'm not that old, okay? No, we're not that old. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> how about this? Thank you for setting an example for women in the outdoors. I'm just, I'm totally, I love you. I'm just kidding. Uh, thank you for joining us for this episode of the Wild and Uncut Podcast. You guys, get online. Check out Sister to the Outdoors. They are on Instagram. They are on Facebook. They have their website. Get out there. Check them out. Get involved and encourage someone that you know to join the sisterhood as well. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, you guys, thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Wild and Uncut podcast. I'm here at the Ruger booth at the NSSF SHOT Show with the world famous Doug Koenig. <laughs> Doug, you are arguably, I mean, not to like really go out there, but you're one of the best shooters in history uh, for pistol and you're actually even dominating the rifle category in precision rifle. Like when it comes to a firearm, um, like you know how to run a gun, but what I love about you be besides that is you know what it takes to build a quality firearm as well. Like your knowledge base as a brand ambassador, as a shooter, I, I, I would say honestly is, is second to none. Well, you know, unlike the racing industry, uh, you know, I call myself a driver of guns, right? Yeah. When we compete, it's what we do. We're driving the guns, shooting them. We don't have a, a pit team to work on everything. So, you know, from early on, I just started to learn about the guns, how to fix them, how to make them run, how to maintain them. And you do that long enough on a lot of different platforms. I've shot a lot of different shooting disciplines, handgun, rifle, shotgun, three-gun, multi-gun, all around, I've shot all different shooting sports. And so for that, you have to have all that equipment and you have to learn how to maintain it, make it run, fix them. And, you know, it's just something that, you know, I've always prided myself is, is understanding how it all works. So when the opportunity to be involved with Ruger and be involved with the products, you know, I've got 30 plus years experience mm -hmm. in the field shooting every day. I mean, I'm not ever gonna try to tell an engineer how to make something. I'm just going to tell them what it needs to be or what mm -hmm. it needs to feel like, what the consumer, customer's looking for in a handgun, in a rifle, you know, how they want it to feel, how they want it to shoot, things like that. You know, it's just, again, it's, I, the analogy is just like, you know, a driver, you know, the car. They're going to tell uh, their, their pit crew chief, you know, hey, the car's doing this, it's doing that. He's not going to fix it. They're going to fix it. Exactly. They know how to do it. They know how to make what needs to be made. Yeah, you um, you have a really interesting story about how you got into shooting. It started, what, in your teens? Yeah, my late teens, yeah. Uh, started out as a carpenter, family business uh, with my dad, my brothers, my uncle. 
and um, just went to a local gun shop, talked my dad into buying a handgun. So we, we bought a Colt 45. Mm -hmm. We had to wait for it to come in. And the shop that we bought was Baylor Precision, and they did custom work. And, you know, they shot competitively. Yeah. That's what they did. They went to Camp Prairie, Bianchi Cup, USPSA Nationals. And they started showing me, you know, all these games. And they, they invited me out uh, to a local Sunday match. And it was in North Jersey. It was 16 degrees and snowing. And I was 17, I think, at the time. And running and gunning. And I had the time of my life. So I was And it I changed your life. It totally did. But, you know, the other thing, once I did it and started doing it, it was never that I thought, oh, I'm going to I'm going to be great. I want to, you know, beat everybody. I'm going to make this a job. It just I just couldn't believe I could go to a match and shoot two or three hundred rounds in one day. Mm -hmm. You know, it was coming from a hunting background or a plinking background. I mean, whoever shot that much? Yeah. I mean, you just never did. So to do that, I was just totally hooked. It was like a drug and it just turned into what it is now and, you know, 30 plus years later. Well, and it is, you know, there's a lot of people that aren't Partic that don't participate in shooting sports, um, that haven't experienced that adrenaline dopamine dump that you have stepping up to a competition when that timer goes off. Um, it is truly makes shooting sports absolutely addictive. And, um, you know, people, a lot of people that, you know, maybe be on the fence about owning firearms or haven't shot firearms don't understand just how fun it is. Absolutely. Well, I've never, you know, I mean, I've taken a lot of shooters and lately I've been doing some corporate events at the range in Florida with, and you know, half of them are people that are somewhat familiar with guns. Some have no experience, and I've yet to have a person not think it's the coolest thing and yeah. leave with a smile on their face. Yeah. They just love it. It's, you know, they just need exposure to it, and, and all the negative stuff that they see on TV is just very, very, very small percentage, mm -hmm. and the rest of it is just awesome. It's it's great fun, great discipline, uh, you know obviously you know to be able to protect yourself that's that's out there but the shooting sports you know to me uh you know it's what it's all about it's it's my life it always has been but i think on top of that it made me a better hunter in the mm -hmm. field okay just how to take the shot you know the breed just everything about shot execution you know came from the competitive side and that's you know i, I one thing i try to tell folks that like to hunt love to hunt they don't get to the range that much, or if they do, they sit there, they shoot five rounds off sandbags yeah. to check their zero, and that's it. It's like, well, I don't know how many people are shooting deer off a of sandbag. I'd I never mean, have, actually. I really You know, I mean, I guess if you're a tower blind hunter or yeah. something like that, you might have that opportunity. But if, if you're anything spot and stalk or just any type of field mm -hmm. hunting, you know, you gotta you got to practice those things. And, and in competition, we do all that, you know, mm -hmm. shooting off rocks and sticks and shooting sticks and prone and mm -hmm. whatever you can think of off your backpack. It's just that's the reality. So to me, uh, I, I think for anybody that wants to be a better hunter, a better, you know, hunter in the field with their, their shooting capability, you know, find a match, find something yeah. to compete. And you get that same, you know, we call it buck fever, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's that adrenaline we get when we hunt at that, you know, time. You think you're going to get the shot. You, you get that adrenaline dump. We just get it, you know, when we go shoot a match, we get it 10 stages in a row. Your main focus has been pistol shooting. Um, and, you know, I, I truly believe, and, and you probably would concur with this, is if you can shoot a pistol well, you can shoot a rifle well. You know, pistol's a lot more challenging to shoot accurately and well than, than a bolt action rifle is. And your first PRS match, actually, I was at with you. It was, was part of, you know, Team Ruger went out and we shot him. And... Um, you were unbelievable just to watch, pick up a rifle and compete in a discipline that you had never participated in up to that. And now you're dominating the production um, class of, you know, PRS and you make it look so easy. Well, I think, I think the fact of, you know, what I've also seen is if you can shoot a handgun well, you know, extremely well because of the short barrel, short sight radius, the, the trigger squeezing you know the, the the trigger execution technique that you have to have to shoot a handgun really really well uh yeah it, it makes shooting a rifle you know a lot easier mm -hmm. you know the key for me in that sport is just you know learning about the positions the equipment needed mm -hmm. and obviously you have to have a good solid shooting platform mm -hmm. the trigger pull is, is pretty secondary for yeah. me at this point after i've shot 
over a million rounds of ammunition. You know, yeah. the, and, and that that fundamental skill is there. But you know, to learn the game and work within the time limits and all the positions. Um, yeah, it's it's awesome. I'm totally hooked in that sport. Oh yeah, you, and you're doing such a great job at it. What is, you know, for those of you out there at home that you know possibly want to participate in a PRS match, you have a match coming up in April of this year. Yeah. And, and registration is going to go hot. It's going to go. Yeah, fast. it's it's going to open up uh, this coming Monday after Shot Show about six o'clock uh, Eastern Standard mm -hmm. Time, and yeah, it's a two-day national match, AG Cup qualifier. Uh, it's a cameo shooting mm -hmm. complex, which is just 12 miles outside of Grand Junction. The facility is absolutely awesome. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we tried to make this, it's not just a match. Yeah. It, it's an event. You know, we want it to be a destination place for the shooters to come, treat them great, give them an, an awesome facility. We've got UTVs at the facility, mm -hmm. so all the squads. It's about a five-mile loop where they mm -hmm. shoot the course of fire, so they all go up to their stages in these UTVs. And they, 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 you know, maneuver through the course. And uh, it's all field-type shooting, animal targets, yeah. uh, natural field uh, situations. And we try to mix the, you know, between hunting and what you would see in a, you know, what I would call a traditional PRS match, flat range match. Uh, it's different. It's different than that. But uh, it's the great thing about the range and the facility and the whole thing. It's like I said, it's 12 minutes from... Uh, Grand Junction, so there's an airport, there's hotels, restaurants. A lot of times, unfortunately, in whether in all the shooting sports, but especially the the long range rifle, where they build the ranges are typically in the middle of Very nowhere. Very remote, <laughs> and there's no food, no hotels, and you're driving extremely long hours. And it, it when you're tired and fatigued, yeah, it's tough. It's a lot, and you're you know you got to get up an hour early just to get to the range. So this, it's really got the best of everything yeah. with convenience. You can get in and out. And again, the match is just awesome. I mean, I'm, I'm biased, but we've, you know, Keith Baker and I are co-match directors. We've, we've put a lot into the experience for the shooters. You know, we in the past have had our opening ceremony is playing the national anthem, get the electric mm -hmm. guitar guy on the cliff, and we have cliff jumpers parachute in, and we also have an ice cream truck that drives around and gives free ice cream for two days to oh, all the nice. shooters. So we, you know, we just try yeah, to you have a good time. Have a good yeah. time. Treat them right. Have them enjoy it. It's a tough course of fire. I won't lie. Um, but if you go into it knowing that it's going to make you a better shooter, yeah, that's what it's all that's about. That's exactly. You know, last year um, was we, we were moving. It's one of the first years in a long time. Well, since COVID, that I haven't shot. You know, a, a match. And I went into hunting season, and I got to admit, like, I did not feel as prepared as I have felt in the past when I have spent a lot of time shooting matches. And I, and I, did, I did shoot an ELR match um, with Night Force. However, that's, that's kind of a belly match. And, I was going to say, it's know, all it, more it's, it's more prone. prone. Yeah. Well, 100% prone. <laughs> yeah, right. So um, it doesn't really prepare you for that hunting. And, and, you know, one thing that I love about PRS or, you know, something like NRL Hunter is you have the opportunity to bring your gear out and take your rifle and put it into different shooting positions and really feel what gives you the most stability, yep. uh, how you achieve the most points of contact using your body or bags or tripods or whatever, right. whatever yep. aids you have. Um, and for me personally, it's not about the fact that I, I want to go there and win. Um, I want to go there and be better than I was when I stepped out of my car that day. Absolutely. I want to go there and have it help prepare me uh, for that shot of a lifetime in, in the fall when I'm hunting and, and become the most ethical hunter I can. And, you know, if I, if I get behind my rifle and, and I know my, my reticle is not as steady as I'd like it to be, I'm, I'm trained enough to say, hey, I have to walk away from the shot opportunity. Absolutely. We have to reevaluate either A, my shooting position, or B, get closer, or both. Um, and so that's what I really love about these matches is it helps you identify uh, limitations. Absolutely. So that you're not over, uh, you know, pushing yourself too far, but you're pushing yourself in the right environment. You're testing yourself and your equipment in the right environment where if you miss or you, you know, put a poor shot placement, it's, it's not a wounded animal. Right. Instead, it's, it's just a steel target well, and it's a yeah. great place to, you know, really prepare you. Absolutely. I mean, when you get into competition... You know, when you're out there on the, you're just practicing, having fun, goofing around. There's no stress. It doesn't make you make mistakes. Absolutely. You get into the competition with that adrenaline. That's where 
you know, that's where you would are going to push yourself mm -hmm. and make mistakes. And then you can learn from that. Okay, you know, I rushed this shot because I wasn't quite steady or I didn't take the time to get yeah. steady or the position itself just stunk. Mm -hmm. uh, I had the wrong bag or, you know, maybe I should have used this bag or mm -hmm. this position. You know, it gives you uh, different opportunities to try different stuff. And then you figure out, okay, what am I doing there? How can I make that better? And then for me, how does that translate when I go on that elk hunt, I go on a mule deer hunt, Absolutely. antelope hunt, whitetail, and you have those opportunities and, and to take that shot. Again, hunts are not cheap. Nope. You know, whether you go with an outfitter or, you know, do it yourself, it's, you're going to spend money, time, effort, licenses, the whole deal. And you may get 10 seconds, 15 yeah. seconds to get set up, make a shot, and that might be your whole opportunity mm -hmm. all season long. So you might as well prepare the best you can or you're not going to have the success that people that do mm -hmm. you know that literally was was my hunting season in Oregon this year my husband and I hunted 11 days and my shot opportunity was a deer that got spooked out of his bed and he came running across an open hillside at 450 yards Yogi ranged him when he was running shouted out the range I dialed at the same time he's yelling at the deer to stop right and I was on my tripod, and I had, I mean, the whole thing went down in like 10 seconds. Right. From the deer running out, having the shot, stopping him and breaking my shot. Um, it, it was so fast. And I know that if I hadn't had the training that I have, there is probably, <laughs> probably wouldn't have come together. Right. Probably uh, zero opportunity. Yeah. I would have been like, well, it ran out, and I wasn't ready, and I fumbled around for 20 minutes. Because you see that a lot of times mm -hmm. with um, young kids or kind of inexperienced shooters, you know, you put them on an animal and they don't realize, you know, literally two minutes has gone by Before and they're, they're still fumbling around with a rear bag or trying to get on their backpack or trying to put their knees up. And these matches and competitions really are there to help you learn how to get into those positions Absolutely. rapidly Absolutely. so that you can make those shots. <clears throat> but with, with you getting into that world, you have taken... Um, Ruger's been a strong supporter of precision shooting for a long time, which, which the engineers here at Ruger do a great job of always kind of moving forward on firearms technology. And, you know, um, I can't remember how many years back it's been, but less than 10 years ago, we, we introduced the Ruger Precision Rifle, which was kind of revolutionary for the shooting Absolutely. sports industry because it was really the first time a gun manufacturer took precision shooting to an affordable place that was something that we could all get into right. and participate with. And with a cool gun, too. With a great gun. Absolutely. And you've been working with Ruger, and now we have not only the Ruger Precision Rifle, we actually have the Ruger Custom Competition Rifle, which you have you know, a great hand in. And maybe explain to everybody a little bit of how well, that went down. Yeah, so after you know shooting uh, the RPR in competition and kind of seeing what other products are out there and the, and the benefits of different things, you know. We decided to kind of update and, and make that RPR better yeah. as a custom shop version. We put a Trigger Tech trigger in it. We swapped over to stainless mm -hmm. for the barrel, which gives us more barrel life, easier to clean. We put the new handguard with the Arca on the bottom because yeah. that's what all the bipods, bag riders, all that stuff is adapted for. Mm -hmm. And it's not, people don't quite understand why, what the purpose is you can put a bipod on anything, but it's fixed in one position. Exactly. With the Arca, you can slide that up to the end, all the or way up to the, the magwell. Anywhere you want yeah. it. And and you do use it a lot in different positions, mm -hmm. depending on the gun, the shooting position, what what's happening. So we did that. We've got a barricade stop. We've, you know, changed the bolt lift pressure, uh, new and firing pin. bigger bolt handle. Bigger bolt handle. You know, we just really looked at everything we could do to take that platform to the next level mm -hmm. and and to show people that you don't have to spend five thousand dollars to have a competitive rifle Ab yeah you know, and that most was the key and give them all the features oh absolutely and it's and the thing i mean every single one of mine and i've swapped barrels out after i've you know shot them out because i shoot six creed more and it gets you get 16 to 1800 rounds on it and Every barrel, they all shoot great. I mean, I shoot my range that I currently belong to. We only have 900 yards is the furthest, but I do all my testing there, and I'm getting you know five inch or better groups at 900 with a factory rifle. I mean, that to me is crazy. Well, and I think a lot of people think 
are under the impression that they can buy success. <laughs> so they want to buy um, a rifle and they want to spend a lot of money on it because it gives them a false sense of confidence. Absolutely. And I can tell you, I'm shooting a factory Ruger rifle and factory Hornady ammunition, and my rifle and ammunition combination shoot much better than I do. Yeah. Um, and so that that's something that um, that you know a lot of people the, the the ultimate variable is the person behind the gun. Right. And I try to tell anybody, listen, if you're going to get into the game and you've got ten thousand dollars to spend, spend on your optics. Two thousand two thousand dollars on your gun set up and take eight thousand dollars and buy ammunition and go learn how to shoot, shoot. and get better. They do it the other way. They spend all this money on the equipment, and then they go, geez, boy, it's expensive to buy ammo or, yeah. or to load. And they don't practice, and then they go to these matches, and they don't have any success or what they expect to have. It's like, well, you got to practice. So it's not, you know, it, it, it's not all about spending the money on the equipment. I mean, to me, I think it's, again, I use a racing analogy. It's you start out small, something simple, learn your, you know, your skill, learn the game, do that. And if you want to eventually get up to an open gun or get into the, you know, really, really high competition stuff, that's, that's great to aspire to that. But you don't have to do yeah. that to start. You don't have to break the bank. And that was the whole idea with the custom shop precision rifle is give them all the bells and whistles, the ultimate gun for a great price. Mm -hmm. You know, that shoots great. And, you know, I've won. And it's a lot of fun. That yeah. Every, you know, the whole family can participate in. Absolutely. You know, and with that, that rifle won three national, you know, and series championships with it with a factory gun. So, you know, it's not all bad. And, again, that you're right. It, it, it is a sport that you can take everybody to. There's a lot of juniors getting into it, families. It's fantastic. Yeah, I met a, a gal yesterday. She's, like, 13 years old, and she's doing the uh, 22 – rifle challenges and she's just crushing it and having the time of her life and it's building so much confidence in her you can just see her beam with pride and she's like shoot better than my dad and <laughs> right um that's i mean as a parent i'm not a parent but i would imagine <laughs> as a parent that that's what you hope for in life is that your kids uh do better than you have done and, and have a better life than you were able to have and that your hard work has given them an example that they not only live up to but supersede and absolutely um, i love seeing all these kids participating and one cool thing that you know nrl hunter does is they provide an opportunity for people that have never shot a match they provide a rifle they provide the ammo all the gear mm. And they waive your first, you know, set of match fees. So awesome. come out, you know, you shoot the guns, they give you the ammo, they welcome you into the community, kind of give you some pointers, let you dip a toe, if you will, and see if it's something that you want to go and, and actually do before mm -hmm. you invest money. Because it is, you know, a financial investment um, to, to get into these shooting sure. sports. And um, if people want to, I, I know you talk about, you know, the training and ammunition, and we all have that concern of training and ammunition. What are some of the things that you do at home, perhaps in a dry fire situation, uh, that would help people? Okay, we're on a fixed budget. We have we've purchased a Ruger Precision rifle. We're looking forward to our first match, but you know I don't have you know the opportunity to go get an extra 300 rounds or whatever and shoot to train. So, what are some things that you would recommend people do at home? Well, you definitely can dry fire, <laughs> and and the good thing about that is, in the PRS you know world, I mean you're shooting off of anything. There's no prop that you may not shoot yeah. off up. You know, you could shoot off a ladder, a, a fence post, a gate. Tractors. <laughs> so anytime you can be anywhere, you know, to me, dry firing is, is other than the recoil management and the fun of hitting the target, mm -hmm. the fundamental skill of working the bolt, uh, you know, work squeezing the trigger, you know, working your shot execution technique, you need to do that. Yeah. I mean, you will never be a good shot if you don't dry fire. Now, I don't dry fire very much now, but I, I dry fired a ton when I started to shoot. Mm -hmm. I'm fortunate now I get to shoot more, and I've kind of that skill set's built into mm -hmm. me now after 30 plus years. But absolutely, there is no substitute for dry firing, whether it's with a rifle, pistol. You know, I tell, when I, ha when I teach pistol classes and I have students come in, I tell them, you know, by the time you get here, you should already know where your holster position is. You should be able to draw the gun. You do all that stuff at home. So when you get to the range, and if you have an hour to shoot, you're shooting for an hour. Not you're not messing with your yeah. equipment. You're not going messing with your grip. And, and every time you draw the gun, you, you know, your sights aren't lined up. All those basic uh, muscle memory f 
you know, skill set fundamentals can all be done at home. Mm -hmm. You're standing, I mean, if you're going to sit there and watch TV, you might as well dry fire. That's what I do. You know, I just dry fire on a light switch. And I still do it for certain things when I'm going from shooting discipline to shooting discipline. That's kind of how I start out my practice mm -hmm. is I'll be at home watching TV or doing something, and I'll be doing mag changes and draws and kind of getting familiar with that piece of equipment again long before I just go to the range and start yeah. blasting. Because I have, for me, I want to get my muscles used to mm -hmm. what I want it to do. So when I do get to the range, I can be efficient and maximize my time on the range because that's what you're trying to do. I mean, even though I do it for a living, I don't want to be there for eight hours and 90 degrees no. if I can get my work done in two. 100%. One of the things I've found as um, a more novice shooter, competitive, competitive shooter, novice, um, I time out a lot on my stages. And so for me, leading up to a match, one of the best ways I've found to help me is to practice getting out in and out of a shooting position Definite. and target acquisition. So you'll see it a lot with people on hunts where they get behind the rifle and they can't find the deer. Mm -hmm. And they're panicking. It's like full-fledged meltdown. They can't find the deer. They can't find their target. They can't acquire it. And learning how to be quick with, you know, orienting your firearm towards the target, locating with your eye where the target is and lining up the top of mm -hmm. your scope turret and then coming down into the rifle. But all of that stuff happening in sub-seconds. And you can do that all dry firing. <laughs> Absolutely. You can, you can have your gun set up, you know, and, and work on those positions in and out. I mean, again, somebody has a garage or out in your backyard, you can set little props up and, and work through it and work through time. Use a timer, set the time, use your iPhone, stopwatch, whatever, and work at getting in and out of your positions with your bags, with your bipods, whatever you think you're going to be using. You know, it, it's a great way to do it. And before I shot... I mean, actually, up until I moved a year and a half ago, I didn't have a place to practice the long-range stuff. Mm -hmm. The matches were my practice, and yeah. that's, that's no lie. I did all my practice either dry fire or at a 100-yard range, and I just had props, and I just mm -hmm. did it with a 22. Mm -hmm. And that's I have a little Ruger Precision Rim Fire. Mm -hmm. That's what I shoot with. That's what I trained with because, to me, it gave me a little bit of the shot execution, hit, trying to hit a target, learning the wind even though it was only 100 yards but with a rim fire it's a, it's a big deal yards, yeah. you know so i got all that but the key was i got good at moving in and out of the positions and how to use my bags mm -hmm. and so when i got to the center fire matches i wasn't bumbling around yeah. and timing out for that reason i mean i still time out because my whole focus is i don't want to shoot a shot that's not going to hit the target mm -hmm. so and there's going to be some stages that i'm not going to get through because they're hard that's just the way it is. One thing I have noticed in the precision shooting world is the technology, um, because these 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 shooters are so competitive, and they're always pushing the technology on the firearms platforms. It's really driving innovation, mm -hmm. and having someone like you on the ground at these matches all the time is is what's helping innovate Ruger firearms as well. And it becomes extremely valuable not only for you know, Ruger as a company, but also for our, our customers, mm -hmm. um, for people that want to come out and they want to be competitive and they want to have that cutting edge technology. We're inputting that back to Ruger. You're inputting that back to Ruger all the time, which is it continuing to keep pushing the brand forward. Right, yeah, and it's not just with the RPR. We take the technology, the things we learn to make things more accurate, better, work better, customer friendly, user friendly, all those fit, function, everything, they go into the hunting guns. They go 100%. into every, all of our product line. Mm -hmm. So when a customer buys a Ruger, he's getting the highest quality, most rugged, reliable mm -hmm. firearm they could get. And that's, that is the trickle-down effect. Mm -hmm. You know, you start at the top, you build the stuff the best you can, you get out and test it, work it, and refine it, and it goes through all the product line. And the end result, I mean, because bottom line, you and I are also customers. I mean, Absolutely. we, not only this is our job, but this is, why we got in it we love doing it we love mm -hmm. to shoot love to hunt we want good stuff yeah i mean that's that's what everybody's looking for you know good reliable equipment that's one thing i i have found with my ruger firearms is on a hunt with my with my rifle i have so much confidence mm -hmm. and and i know that when you know i put myself in the right position i'm going to have point of aim point of impact accuracy and rugged reliable repeatable is kind of one of night forces slogans as well and 
the two, you know, knowing what your firearm is capable of, knowing what your optic is capable of, knowing what your ammo is capable of, it all comes together. But knowing what you're capable of, that's what gives me the confidence is, hey, I, you know, I go into the field now and I know, hey, my firearm's capable of this. All of these components, am I capable of it? And that's right. ultimately, it always comes back to me because my gun is built better than I can shoot. My ammo performs better than I can shoot. My optic is better mm -hmm. than me. I am the lowest common factor <laughs> of anything. Um, so if I walk into it and I feel comfortable, I know it's all going to come together. Absolutely. And that's a great feeling as a hunter. And I want people to know that you really don't have to be rich to get in the sport. You don't have to have, you know, all of the best gear you can have the best gear without spending those tickets uh pri high price tickets and and get out there and be competitive absolutely you just got to get out there and do it and there's some other shooting sports that are that are starting up at startup that are more hunter based mm -hmm. you know i know nrl is one but that's still equipment a little bit equipment intensive there's a couple others that are starting in the west that are more show up what you hunt with mm -hmm. it's three to five targets the furthest distance is 500 yards mm -hmm. and it's it's really I, I think that's the key it needs to be stepping stones and and the folks mm -hmm. can find something there's enough out there whether you want to sh you know compete with a rifle pistol shotgun the shooting sports are awesome they're everywhere rimfire you name it it's out there but it's going to you know they're not only are they a ton of fun, but if, you, if you're if you also a hunter, they will make you a better shot in the field mm -hmm. for sure. Now, you also have a very, very nice competition 1911. And I have that pistol, mm -hmm. and I it's like the Cadillac of <laughs> pistols. It is absolutely incredible to shoot. Uh, walk everybody through your kind of design behind that at 1911. If you guys are 1911 fans, that you're definitely going to want to check out. Uh, Doug's 1911. Yeah, so, you know, that was one of the things, you know, when, when Ruger signed me on, they, we wanted to kind of look at the 1911 line. And, again, the start, they have the shooting team, but then also the custom shop. And to have that next level of firearms, more refinement. So we kind of went through all the process, and, you know, I kind of gave my input on my experience. And, again, what the consumer, you know, when you pick up a, a 1911 pistol, what are they looking for? The mm -hmm. fit? feel function what's it feel like you know you don't want a, a slide to frame fit that rattles you want it to be feel like it's on ball bearings mm -hmm. nice smooth tight good engagement same with the barrel fit um, the fire controls are my fire controls I, I manufacture the hammer sear disconnector um, so it's and it's all machine parts you know good crown the the rifle the twist is one in 16 everything that's on that gun is how I compete. It's what I compete with. So we put everything in it, fiber optic front sight, magwell, great grips. So really it's race ready. It's, yeah. it's either race ready or just having a really nice 1911 pistol that shoots very, very accurate. I will put it against any custom shop, any custom handgun manufacturer out there. I mean, the guns just, just drive tax. I mean, they really shoot well. So. I mean, it, it was really neat when we launched it. Uh, the people that, that bought them right away or people, we did a couple indoor ranges. And as soon as they got to shoot them, they just, they couldn't believe it was a Ruger because they'd never had a product at that level. I mean, to really go to that extreme of building something so refined and so nice, um, they love it. I mean, still, you know, I know we're, we're getting ready to, to run another batch of them because they sold out so fast that people still, I get emails and yeah. messaged all the time hey when are you guys building more of these when are you building more of these so they're coming yeah and you guys be patient because you know ruger is doing this custom line and it's truly you know offering firearms platforms where you can take them and step in and be competitive it's so all of this is kind of a new new innovation from ruger we're always moving forward and uh, we're so excited to have this offering for Absolutely. our customers this is the first time ever that we have done a truly custom series um, of firearms for people um, we also have 1022s that that's are right custom. i was just gonna say that they're awesome full machine you know out of billet aluminum i mean again back in the competitive days sportsman's team challenge some of the stuff that we were doing you know volkortsen and some other manufacturers we all started with a ruger 1022 mm -hmm. action and then just kind of souped it up with match barrels and all sorts of stuff well now the custom shop 1022 again is race ready it yeah. has all the, the best stuff on it and they shoot phenomenal mm -hmm. i mean my guns are shooting inch 
you know, right around an inch at 100 yards. That's incredible. You know? I mean, for 10-22, it's, it's, it's insane mm-hmm. without having to do anything to it. So, you know, you don't, and you don't have to break the bank to get it. You know, it's not a $2,000, you know, rifle anymore. It's under 1000 bucks. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's really exciting to be part of it and to give some input to it. And, again, it all comes back. The customer has an opportunity to get something yeah. really high quality, race ready, competition ready, or just, you know, hey, everybody, when they get in their backyard and they start plinking, the competition always starts. Let's mm-hmm. be real. It always starts between siblings and friends and so you want to have some good stuff. Fathers and daughters. <laughs> Absolutely. I love right. seeing that. Like it is, it brings me so much joy. And it's really interesting. The matches that I've been to recently, there's more young women mm-hmm. competing than I have seen young men competing. I agree with that. And it is, I mean, the way these girls are coming into these shooting sports and succeeding, it's really, I, I you know, to me, it, it's heartwarming. Absolutely. Um, because, you know, the girls are now out there. That's the one thing I love about a firearm is it doesn't limit anybody based on gender. It, everybody has an equal opportunity yeah. uh, to shoot. And it, it doesn't matter if you're a man, a woman, or a boy, or a girl. You can come out there, and it's it's the person behind the firearm. And Absolutely. these girls are really showing up. They're competitive, and um, it's so welcoming to all the ladies and mm-hmm. young ladies out there to shoot and train and, and come compete. It just comes down to who puts the work in. And it doesn't matter, you know, boy, girl, man, woman. It Just like you said, it's, it's, an, it's a level playing field. Yeah. Who's going to work hard for it and let your skill set, you know, come through? And it is. It's exciting. I mean, to me, that's the whole deal is getting more and more of the younger shooters. They're the future. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm uh, you know, on the other side of that curve. And, you know, I'll always shoot, I'll always compete just because it's what I love to do. It's, it's my lifestyle. It's who I am. But, you know, the whole deal is I want to see more and more and more, Mm -hmm. you know, teenagers, you know, younger shooters get in the sport and and just enjoy it. You know, they don't have to get into it. I mean, they can say, hey, I want to be the best. I want to make a living doing it, be a professional, whatever. That's great. But don't lose sight of just come in and have fun. That's what it's all about. Absolutely. That's how I got started. I had no drive or thought that. It was going to be anything more than me going and shooting a local match with a group of guys. You know, I mean, to me, it was like hunting camp. You know, we'd start out with three or four, and some Sundays we'd go to a match. You drive an hour, two hours to a match, and there's eight, ten of you, and you go shoot the match, <clears throat> go stop and get something to eat. Everybody's always, you know, busting each other's stones and the competition side of stuff. And it was just fun. Great I mean, it was, it was what it was all about, and I never, it was never like, oh, geez, you know, I, I can't wait to to do this for a living. I mean, it was, I was clueless. I never thought in, in a million years that it was even something to think about. It just, I was just having fun and it just kind of happened. And you also have a TV show. Mm-hmm. So talk a little bit about that as well, where people can watch and, and be yeah. more engaged in what you're doing. Yeah. So it's Doug Koenig's championship season that, you know, kind of, and the way we, I came up with that title, it wasn't just about competitive shooting and oh well he's winning so he wants to show that that wasn't really actually the reason to me championship season is anytime you're outdoors doing something whether we're on a hunt at a match teaching new you know shooters it's like winning a championship Mm -hmm. that's that's kind of was the whole theme and thought behind it was that's that's the deal get people out so and my show was one of the first i think it might even be the only that still does competitive shooting and hunting Mm -hmm. and i try to tie through equipment and preparation and how it works Mm -hmm. you know and how the similarities are between the two so we just do that you know we cover matches uh some of the matches i'm shooting in some of the matches i'm running and then if you know we do some different type of hunts and again i think a lot of times people say well you know what are you hunting with how do you set it up how do you sight it in what bullet are you using why are you doing what you're doing what other tools are you using so we try to have a how-to in the show. It's not just about, hey, there's Doug, and he's going to go try to shoot some big animal. Half the time, I'm just shooting whatever, shooting cows. You know, I've done elk hunts where I just shoot a cow. Yeah. I mean, it's about meat. I like to eat them. Yeah, so you and me both. It, it's not all about, you know, I'm going to go shoot this, you know, 400-inch, you know, bull elk. I mean, that's great if it happens, yeah. but... I it's love never the happened for me, just for the record. <laughs> it's never happened to me either. <laughs> no. So if I was banking on that, I, I wouldn't hunt long probably. <laughs> right. And still, even when I whitetail hunt, I mean, yeah. I'll be honest, I'm, 
if it's not, you know, I have a farm that I hunt on, and, and if it's not a really mature buck, I won't shoot. I have just as much enjoyment yeah. shooting does, with, you know, hunting with a bow, and because and, we love to eat them. It, yeah. That's how I, you know, we feed the family that, with venison. So, um, that, so that was the big thing with the show is to try to show that lifestyle. And, and when I started the show, you, all, you had hunting shows and a few shooting shows. There was mm-hmm. never an overlap. And to me, it's like, well, I mean, my life's an overlap. I yeah. love to do both, and I know there's people that do. And I wanted to, sh- you know, try to take the shooters and introduce them to hunting and take the hunters and introduce them to the competitive shooting world mm-hmm. and kind of give that, you know, crossover. And, you know, I, I think I've done a pretty good job with what we've done on the show. Just need to get more people to kind of find out about it. It's on Pursuit. Mm-hmm. Uh, right now we run uh, quarters two, three, and four, and it's Friday night at 9 o'clock Eastern time. So, you know, just check it out. Mm-hmm. And and then they can follow you on social. Now, Doug is not <laughs> a social media guru. So no. you guys. Uh, be patient. Be patient with that. I was trying to teach him how to do reels this week when we were at range day. Yeah. and um, That's a struggle. Yeah. <laughs> we're working on it. It's a work in progress. But you guys can fi- follow Doug on Instagram and Facebook. Do you have a website also, Doug? I do. It's DougKanig.com. So you guys get on there. And then I invite you all. Go to the Ruger website, Mm -hmm. so Ruger.com, and click the tab for the custom shop. And you guys check out these awesome firearms that Doug is working year-round with our fantastic team of engineers here at Ruger to make sure that all of us have the same opportunity at competition at an affordable price range. Mm -hmm. So we awesome. really appreciate what you're doing in that aspect and, and that you're making uh, competitive shooting sports something that um, all of us can truly enjoy and, and participate at, at that level with. So yeah. thank you so much for oh, your time here absolutely. at SHOT Show. I know you're so busy. Um, and I, I appreciate all of you at home for tuning in to this episode of the Wild Nun Cut podcast. And we will see you all next time. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Doug. Thank you for listening to the Wild and Uncut podcast. If you would like to hear more, be sure to subscribe to my Pursue the Wild digital series on YouTube and follow me at Christy Titus on Facebook and Instagram.